Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. Welcome back to some more Sound of Drop. So, we're in a bit of a pinch right now. This fucking kawaii girl is uh, getting surrounded by a bunch of orcas. Which will most likely end in her death, or my death, unless we do something about it. So we have the choice to save her or to hurry along. Who knows? Like, last time we tried to make a dash for her and we fucking died with the jellyfish, so... But I heard a lot from a lot of you guys in the comments that we should save her because... We all know. No waifu should be left behind. No waifu, no waifu, you know what I mean? Alright, let's fucking save her. I didn't even know that girl's name. However, as things are now, it seems the girl will be attacked by the orca. I push my numerous doubts aside and focus only on that fact. I want to save her. Thanks to those words welling up inside, I can no longer say this doesn't concern me. Moreover, if it were Humanor, she would surely get involved. Even if I save Humanor after ignoring someone in trouble, she wouldn't be happy about it. I'll save that girl. Someone. I hear those timid words she mumbles. Oh god. Little by little, the th three orcas swimming in the air seem to be tightening the circle they have made. I have to hurry. What should I do? Voicing my doubts, I look around. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Alright, there's a fire extinguisher. I wonder if I can move the machines with the computer. At any rate, I have to get her away from the orca. Fire extinguisher. That's a fire extinguisher. At the edge of the room, I discover a fire extinguisher. If I can attract that, their attention with this, and somehow, while the orca are distracted, I will need to get away. I pull the yellow pin from the fire extinguisher and point the hose at the orca. Ah! Yeah, jizz all over that. I mean, spray all over that. I mean, fuck. In time with my shout, I pull the nozzle of the fire extinguisher with everything I have. At that moment, white smoke sprays out. Hidden in the smoke, the orca forms immediately vanish. Take this opportunity and run for it! I shout, leaving the fire extinguisher on the ground. I then run for the exit. <gasps> it is only a second later that I feel something strike my back. Hit so hard, it's incomparable to bumping into people in town. I pitch forward and fall. No! Yeah! That scream is involuntary. Little by little, the air around my neck starts to hurt, and I scream once more. My breath grows light. Air is blowing out of the hole that is open in my neck. Oh, for fuck's sake! <sighs> After a while, my screams will not even come out anymore. Orcas right in front of me. The three orca had been with that girl, and one more was right where I'd been heading. It is useless to wonder about where it came from. With the orca swimming in air, the concept of space itself has become more than ambiguous. Ah, oh, shit. My body's overrun with the orca's small, sharp teeth. I try to raise my voice, but I realize my mouth is full of seawater. Before I figure out what's going on, I'm in the ocean. What? What? The blood exiting from my body gradually flows upwards. It's not just in the ocean, but it seems I'm in the deep part of it. As I try to fill my chest with air, water flows into my lungs from the hole in my neck. My body is likely returned to the sea. As I think this, my body, which is taken on buoyancy, seems as if it belongs to someone else. You guys lied to me. Yes, you are dead. Being too kind-hearted is mere foolishness. Well, I'm in a hurry. I have something I have to do. Are you fucking kidding me? Melting. I try to save your bitch ass and this is how you repay me? God damn it, man. God damn it, man. Ah, I right, fuck the fire extinguisher. I wonder if I can move the machines with a computer. It's dangerous to get close to the orca. That's why I can't think of a way to undo these circumstances. If I had bait, I could probably distract the orca, but I don't see anything nearby. Needless to say, the girl under attack is already playing that role. Something I can use. Hoping against hope, I place my hand on the computer console. The liquid crystals on the touch panels seem to power on, causing some sort of control screen to be displayed. This is... The tunnel tank, the stage, the jellyfish booth. Aside from those, the names of various facilities in the aquarium are displayed. From this computer, I can probably access each of those facilities. However, now is not the time for that. Anything's fine. Just... Ignoring the other facilities, I touch the selection for the basement level control room. The control screen for the air, the speakers, and so on is displayed. How much does the habitat of these orcas have in common with the real orca? Realizing I don't have the time to think it over, I decide the temperature settings are the best place to start. It's ideal for humans, but it could burn the sea creatures. It's no use. This will take too much time. The roar of the air is fierce, and there is little change in what I can feel on my skin. There has to be another way. Another way to use the orca's environment. For fuck's sake. Okay, use its sense of pain, use its sense of hearing, use its sense of smell. Well, they are mammals. So, smell or hearing? Smell! 
The orca have begun probing the girl with the tips of their noses. The girl provides no resistance, her mouth flapping open and closed. This is bad. I have to... Sm small but sharp teeth peek out from the small opening in the orca's mouth. The tips of its teeth seem to sparkle and my pulse quickens. There's no time left to test another method. A sense of smell. Now I have to calm down. Sharks have a keen reaction to the smell of blood, so it could be the same for orca. No, that shouldn't be it. I have heard that in exchange for the development of the hear sense of hearing, orcas hardly use their sense of s uh, sight or sense of smell. Well shit. When I take my eye off the monitor, I spot a moth that has fallen over in the corner of the room. Orca is supposed to have the ability to sense pain. If that's the case, then this, then that will be my weapon. If I aim for the eyes, even I can do it. Even I know how powerless I am, but if it's a soft spot like the eyes, I should be able to get them to fall back with this mob. <gasps> I'll save you now! I ready myself, then leap at the orca. I thrust the opposite end of the mob at the orca in front of me. The tip of the wooden mop digs into the orca's right eye. It gives little resistance, only a soft sensation in return. Well, you're done goofed. Right away, fresh blood floats upwards. Defying gravity, it acts the same as blood flowing up to the surface when you've started bleeding underwater. The orca shakes its large body as if it's moaning in pain. Ah! As I shout, I pierce the orca's left eye with the mop. Eee. Trembling against the squishing sensation, I put all my strength into it. Even as fear takes over, it isn't as if I can stand by without taking action. Fuck him up! Even after seeing blood spout out from his left eye, I continue to stab it. The nerves inside the eye are connected to the brain. With the mop handle being as long as it is, I can reach the orca's brain. No! No! Ah! I will kill the orca. Despite the fact that I'm the one doing the attacking, I scream. If I had just seen such a big creature at the aquarium, I would have thought how cute it was. But I have to kill it now. I push the mop into his brain, <laughs> twisting it as I do so. Looking away, I twist the mop faster and faster. I'm scrabbling his brains by my own hands. If I don't resolve myself to this, we will both die. The orca gives no resistance and stops moving. When I pull the mop out, the left eye dangles from the still connected red muscle. <laughs> Lovely. <sighs> I did it. Somehow I killed one. Now I just have to do the same to the other two. I steady my quickening breathing and ready the mop. I'll save you. When I turn back to the girl, I'm shoved up against the wall. What? Before my eye is a large body. It presses against my abdomen with a strength that contrasts with its cute exterior. No, it can no longer be considered cute. Having lost both eyes, the stench of blood rises from these hollow black cavities like steam. My face is dirty, showered in that fishy smelling blood. Ugh, its left eye dangling from the red muscle glares at me. Why? Oh, what the fuck? It's the dead orca? The stench of the rotting corpse is already wafting off the orca's body. Reddish brown mucus spills from its mouth. <sighs> Suddenly, it feels as if something's touching my hand, something with the same feel as a scrambled brain. The mop is easily broken by the orca's body and floats around me. <clears throat> God damn it. Unable to endure it, I cough up air. The air turns to bubbles as I look towards the ceiling. No, there is no longer a ceiling there. This is underwater. If it weren't, blood wouldn't float upwards and the mop wouldn't float about. Instead of air, I breathe in water. It's salty. Sea water. I can no longer breathe. A dull sound resonates, caught by the sound two orcas follow. <sighs> oh, fuck. God damn it, man. As if playing around, two of them ram me with their bodies. My insides are jumbled. Something bitter wells up in my mouth. I vomit up something reddish brown. It resembles the guts on an, anima an anatomical model. The only difference is how soft this is. The orca bear their fangs as if they're finishing, finished playing. Little by little, my body is diminished. I'm becoming a part of the orca. Unable to be probably, properly consumed by the orca, I was supposed to kill. My flesh spills out from its eyeballs. That's right, the eyes and the mouth are connected. There's one more thing I've realized, that I'm probably already dead. Fuck. <laughs> Earth shattering. Yeah, that was an earth shatteringly gory and disturbing imagery of getting eaten by an already dead orca. Oh, god damn it. Well, that 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 is yet again a very cute death scene, but... <laughs> god fucking damn it. <laughs> Shit! Alright, we heard him, so uh, we have to use its sense of hearing. The orca have become probing the girl with the tips of their noses. The girl provides no resistance, her mouth flapping open and closed. This bad, I have to... Small but sharp teeth peek out from the small opening in the orca's mouth. The tips of its teeth seem to sparkle and my pulse quickens. There's no time left to test another method. I have to find some sort of solution from within the machine right in front of me. Speaker! 
I discovered the volume sitting on the liquid crystal display and hazily recall something inside my mind. Sound! Ultrasonic waves! Their sense of hearing! I remember something I saw on TV about orca in their environment. Dolphins, whales, and other similar species use sound for communication. The various species make noises and can comprehend that sound. These are creatures with excellent hearing. Anything's fine, just some noise! That's my only hope, I think. If I can make a loud enough sound, I can probably repel the orca. Setting aside my feelings of impatience, I set the volume as high as possible. All that's left is where the playback comes from. I wonder where the sound comes from, huh? At that moment, chills run up my spine. The girl and the three orca are at the periphery of my vision. Then I wonder what in the world it was that just brushed against my spine. Could it have been? Despite trying to keep it under control, my heartbeat has quickly ra rapid, rapidly increased. Sweat drips from my forehead. There is one more orca here now. Four in total. Oh, what the fuck? <sighs> As I realize what is happening, I suddenly feel my legs floating. Not just that, but suddenly my entire body is floating about. No, there's no way I could be floating in midair. My body has taken on buoyancy and is floating. Oh, come the fuck on. I try to speak, but salty water flows into my throat. This is underwater. Without realizing it, I've ended up in the ocean, unable to breathe. I'm suffocating. It's bad. It's bad. Not only does it seem like I will drown, but the orcas are at my back. My eyes have finally grasped their enormous stature. On the other hand, the backdrop of the basement has disappeared. The computer and machines, I can no longer see any of it. Ugh. It's no good if things stay as they are. I'll be attacked. I'll become the orcas' helpless prey. My hands wriggle about and seize a long, narrow pole. <laughs> as I'm prodded by the tip of the orca's nose, my body gives a violent shake. The giant orca has the intensity of a semi-truck. The force from being pushed causes the pole I grab to spin about. The orc opens its mouth right before my eyes. The fangs, which I have only seen only from a distance, seem very large at point blank range. No, no! Pulling my body back, I begin to float slightly away from the orca. The velocity at which I'm floating backwards is still much slower than the speed of the orca's approach. As I'm trying to use the pole I'm holding in my right hand as an axis, it begins to spin. Falling victim to the current created by the orca's movement, I lose hold of the pole. God damn it! An orca approaches from the front, seizing me. Oh, fuck. Well, I am... I am turning that down for you guys. Oh, I think I just went deaf. Just as the orca's fangs graze my head, a screeching king sound vibrates. My body hits the hard floor with a thump. With hard, ragged gas, I realize I can breathe. Huh. The seawater that once surrounded me now gone. I am once again in the place with all the machines. As if a filter has been placed over my ears, I cannot hear clearly. Yeah, same. Thanks, game. Strange. Strange. More importantly, that girl. There is nothing where my eyes land. Seeing that a shadow has fallen over me, I look over my shoulder. Oh, hey. Like nothing fucking happened. Thanks. The girl from earlier is touching the machine. It seems that she is talking, but I can't understand what she is saying because I cannot hear, as if someone has covered my ears. On top of the computer is a microphone spun around. It's the type connected directly to the machine. Right, I accidentally... The howling and the clicking sound, you may a bit of a hearing. As the filter over my ears fades, I am able to understand the girl's words. The clicking sound, the ultrasonic waves the orca emit. The loud volume of that sound probably repelled the orca. The illusion of being in the water is also gone. Somehow, we seem to have escaped danger. Yeah! As I stand up, I start to feel relieved. Good. Don't start feeling relieved on your own. If you look at the big picture, our situation hasn't changed all that much. I just fucking saved your life, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Huh? Muddy? What did you say? Long hair and a bit shorter than I. I didn't realize it earlier, but she has the look of my missing little sister from behind. Her hairstyle and color are different, but something about her makes me feel nostalgic. The girl turns away from the machine and looks back at me. Her eyes are the same color as Muddy's after all. If Muddy had continued to grow, she would surely look like this. If you're going to cause a disturbance, don't involve me. Well then. Wait a second. I refuse. What a fucking bitch. With no concern for me, the girl begins to walk away. She must know something. My intuition tugs at me. Wiping the dust off my butt, I follow after her. It isn't that I'm trying to cause a disturbance. If I truly believe this girl to be muddy, then I may have to deny what I see before me. I only want to speak with the girl. However, in spite of these thoughts, my words will not come out. I am searching for my little sister who went missing here five years ago. You look a lot like her, that's all. So, is this why you saved me then? No, that's not it. It's just, 
You're in danger, sir. I don't get it. Well then, tell me what you know about this Montan Aquarium, because my little sister and my friend, Muddy and Himeno, I want to save them. Himeno, the girl from earlier? You were able to pull yourself together then. Girl stops walking for a bit. In that moment of inaction, I'm, I'm able to reach her side with small steps. Giving me a sideways glance, the girl speaks quietly. I'll pay back my debt now. Debt? The debt I owe for you saving me. I don't see it as something you have to pay back at all. I think it is, because I don't know when either you or I will die. I should pay it back while, I'm, while we're still alive. So within this malicious mountain aquarium. Malicious mountain aquarium? The place where we're standing. It was born from an incident five years ago. A malicious alternate dimension existing alongside the regular one. If it weren't, such bizarre phenomena couldn't occur. Malicious alternate dimension? What exactly do you mean? If I could explain it, I wouldn't be having all this trouble. The girl says curtly, and just like that, turns around. Her words only deepen this mystery further. This alternate dimension world. Could it be like the parallel world Hyo san was talking about? Paying no heed to my to me being deep in thought. To me being deep in thought, the girl starts walking away. What? Wait, at any rate, could we at least say we're trapped in this aquarium? To my knowledge, though I haven't tested that theory. I'm getting out of here, together with someone precious to me, because I will save Himeno. Do what you want. Don't you want to escape as well? If you do... Come with me or let's go together. Well, is that the same fucking thing? Let's go together. Well, go together. There's no need. I don't want to run away from this place. The girl rejects my proposition flat out, giving the impression that she would never accept. Giving the proposition that she's a fucking bitch. Quickening her pace, she walks back in the direction of the previous room. But I was planning to go this way too. That's right. In the end, moving forward means our destinations are the same. Moving at a trot, I follow the girl. Huh. Well, for one thing's for certain, she's a bitch. <laughs> There are stairs at the end of the underground passage. Climbing those stairs leads to a waiting room for staff. According to the map, it seems this waiting room is connected to the passageway where Hyo-san went crazy. However, I cannot hear any particularly strange sounds. There are various things scattered around this room, and they seem to have been left this way for some time, but it doesn't appear to be in disrepair the way the stage is. Why are you following me? Because, in order to find the clues to escaping from this aquarium, I have to keep moving forward. Is that so? Um, by the way, can you tell me your name? If you're going to ask someone their name, you should give yours first. Right, I'm Nakanome Mayumi. I'm usually called Mayu. How about you? There's no need for me to tell you. What a fucking bitch! <laughs> you're cute, but god damn, you're a bitch from hell. BFH. Use that. Put that on a t-shirt. The girl mixes a sigh in with this brief conversation, thinking that I'm the one who feels like sighing. Somehow the conversation has come to a close. Though her attitude towards me is cold, she has shown no outright aggression. Reassuring me that I'm no longer alone. It feels like someone was here recently. I mutter on spotting someone's clothes and partially consumed sports drink. As if having reached the same conclusion, the girl returns my glance. In this in this aquarium, each room is completely different. Being completely ruined or being in use like this room. You think so too then? She's surprisingly receptive to what I said. The girl sits down on a sofa in the small room, motioning for me to sit opposite her. She seems to be telling me that sh she wants to talk everything over thoroughly. The phenomena of Mountain Aquarium. You mentioned how every room is different, but I think that each door you take is different. Um, what exactly do you mean? I hoped you'd be sharper, but you're a blockhead after all. You also, you have also experienced opening a door to find things that have changed. Am I wrong? Yeah, I have. Things like hearing strange voices or having a normal person go crazy. The girl places her hand on her chin, a serious expression appearing on her face. I don't think she would listen to what I had to say at all, but apparently Mountain Aquarium is the exception. You said, also, does that mean you have as well? When I entered one room, I was choked by the stench. I thought it was from the tanks not being filtered, but no matter how many rooms I passed through, I realized the situation in each room was completely different. It was the same for me. Thinking I didn't completely grasp the situation, I tried going back the way I came. When I did so, the situation was completely different the first and second time around. At first, the fish in the stinky tanks were swimming about. Do you get it? When you open the door, the circumstances of the room change? At the very least, the doors are the key. After hearing your story, I'm convinced. Hmm. After saying this, the girl rises and adjusts the hem of her skirt. Well, I'll be off. Um, wait a minute. Shouldn't we share information, like what things are like in each area? There's no need. It changes each time you open a door, so all of our experiences up to this point are in the past. Hmm. With that cold attitude, the girl puts her hand on the exit door. 
Somehow I feel that trying to stop this girl from going on alone is pointless. Slumping my shoulders with the realization that I'll once again be alone, I discover a book lying on the sofa. Where you were sitting just now, is that a diary? A diary? Could it belong to one of the staff of Munton Aquarium? The girl reacts with sudden interest and returns to the spot facing me. Somehow, just as the girl said, it seems to be the diary of the Munton Aquarium staff member, a bit larger than a paperback, it is similar to a pocket notebook. Let me see. Oh. The girl takes the diary from my hands and opens it. This date is from five years ago. From five years ago? Five years ago. The day Marty went missing and that the incident the girl mentioned occurred. Martin Aquarium was the thing that those two incidents had in common. This diary is something important written inside. This is what my intuition is telling me. I want to look too. Pulling back the girl's arm as she reads the diary on her own, I force my way in so I can peek at it as well. In the beginning, it is all a simple description of this job person's job. I'm interested in how the fish are cared for and the hidden workings of the aquarium, but now is not the time. The girl flips through the book, looking for important information. This is what I want as well. This is... Let's take our time going through this part. The date is one I recognize. A cold day. Halfway through January. The date of my first visit to Munson Aquarium. A day of destiny. There's been an incident, accident, a big one. The fish in the deep sea fish booth died due to an error in the pressure control valve, and in the ensuing panic, Director Saka Sakuragi died as problems with the machinery increased. The loan on the deep sea fish booth hasn't even been paid off yet, but tomorrow will be closed down right away. It's been called a closure, but the staff is being called together. Ah, oh, I'm so down. I'm moving on. Okay. The girl continues flipping through the diary. Could this director's death have been the incident the girl was talking about? For some time after that entry, it seems to be just his grumblings. Evidently, the girl is skipping over these parts. Seems this employee was going through some tough times. It's been three months of the day since we started operating with the deep sea fish booth closed down. Customer traffic has decreased, even though we do have the tunnel tank and jellyfish booth. Thanks to it being promoted as a date spot, the amount of couples coming in is increasing. Our bonuses have probably been cut, but it seems we can continue without losing any staff. Finally, an optimistic entry. Three months since the accident, for a recovery, it happened pretty fast. I don't think I was as positive as he was three months after Marty disappeared. The girl finally begins to read on, his, on in the diary. After a month passes in the diary, the speed with which she flips through the pages slows down. Lately, strange rumors have begun to spread, like that the water in the tank turns to blood, or that the director's ghost swims about. They're urban legends. I don't know who's spreading these rumors, but they seem to be popular among high school girls. Thanks to that, the amount of high school girl customers in is increasing. It's probably a one-time boom. Once the boom is over, there's no doubt that the amount of customers will recede in contrast. They've been around for five years, these rumors. The girl nods at my words. She still doesn't take her eyes off the diary. Though the rumors should be fading into obscurity, they seem to be steadily increasing in their grandeur. I've been asked things by girls like, The director was killed, right? It was a murder, right? That shouldn't be happening. Well, it's fine as long as the girl's cute. <laughs> For a second, a scowl appears on the girl's face. This per staff person's candid thoughts aren't really reassuring. It'll probably be impossible for anyone to remain neutral about this, so I can sympathize with the girl's sullen expression. Even amongst the staff here, rumors have begun to spread. Even those who are decent adults are keeping them alive. I want Kozuki to stop with the There are so many fish, fishy things about the accident in the deep sea fish booth and playing detective. The girl pauses briefly as, as she thinks something over. But when she realizes I am looking at her, she flips the page noisily. <laughs> Don't look at me, backer. That Kozuki. He's been about he's been out for three days now. He's pushed his luck too far by encouraging these rumors. It doesn't seem to be just someone skipping work. The girl's puzzled expression gives a hint of something more. That guy, ever since he came back, he's gone weird. How are the fish? How's the ghost? I'm the only one that's actually listening to him. From here, the writing gets messy. It does. Don't play around. Stop with messing with me. What's going on? Cause it drowned to death in one of the tanks. I thought he'd been going too far with these rumors, but he was a good guy. Everyone else has started calling it a curse. What's going on, damn it? Again, someone died in Montana Cram. I'd spoked. Sorry. As he was a person who was active in spreading the urban legends, with that, the rumor would have become easy to swallow, for children and adults. Something is weird. Lately, deaths among the creatures we have on display have increased. After all our work to recover, management is hitting a slump again. The weird rumors aren't going away either. Why can't I see the ghost of the girl inside the aquarium? It's so over the top, I don't get any of it. The two of us continue to read intently. Lately, I'm seeing fish everywhere. As if seeking prey, I have a vora voracious appetite. Come to think of it, I've started to think that rumor in particular might be true. After the closing of the exhibit, I've seen a girl with long hair. Even though it's June, she's wearing winter clothes. There's no doubt about that. That sounds familiar. What? Without my noticing, that word slips out. No, that's wrong. The denial appears in my mind. 
The girl notices that I've fallen into a strange state and she curtly says, Concentrate. Either way, I'm already concentrating. I take a deep breath and steady my breathing, squinting to follow the words of the diary. I've gone crazy, or so many of them say. What's crazy about me? I haven't the slightest idea. This is an aquarium, so it shouldn't be weird for there to be fish everywhere. Look, even as I write this, they swim around me. They're... a clownfish. This is... probably the same phenomenon as I experienced. Yeah. Fish swimming about, even in places with no water. It had to be connected to the phenomenon in the underground control room. Even with this girl and I having experience being attacked ourselves, it feels like I'm still resisting this for some reason. Lately, I feel like I'm going to drown. I wonder if my body's weakening. Nevertheless, everyone is so cruel. Even if I were to start drowning in this room, no one would help me. Drowning with no water there, that's... Yes, the same phenomenon. And by this room, maybe... The room we're in right now, this staff room. I want to go ahead and quick. I'm at my limits. Fish are swimming around everywhere. No matter where I go, I feel like I'm drowning. And no matter what, no one believes me. Ever since Kozuki died, I'm miserable. The next entry is the last. Yeah, let's take a look. I wonder if my past life was as a fish. Recently, I feel no resistance in the water. I wonder what that means. Who knows? The girl closes the diary and places on the table with a dull thud. The last entry in the diary was July 10th, around the same time as of years now. I wonder, what could have happened to the staff member after that? I somehow know the answer. Surely he met the same end as the one called Kozuki. As I mull over my doubts, I notice a half full plastic bottle on the table. This juice, the expiration date on it is from four years ago. There was a calendar on the other room, other side, but it's also from four years ago. I thought this room seemed to have been recently in use, but it's the month in aquarium from four years ago. Four years ago? Yes. The, pr the prices in the pamphlet left here are almost 200 yen cheaper than they are now, so there's no doubt about it. Despite my lingering doubts, I believe what she says. Up to this point, I've seen time passing in a weird fashion here many times. Rather than being in awe of the fact that we're in the mountain aquarium of long ago, I'm more caught up in the realization of how many years has passed. Once. Once. Four years ago. Mountain aquarium closed down for about half a year. It was right around July. Surely that was when this employee died. I had no idea. It wouldn't have been that big a deal. There are other things for people to do for fun. Anyway, the current urban legends about Munson Aquarium probably came from this period, and they aren't merely rumours. You're saying there could be others that wound up in similar circumstances to ours? Yes. Moreover, there may be someone who got out of this Munson Aquarium. There has to be a clue somewhere after all. This diary hints at that. However, this diary holds one more possibility. The three-day absence from work. After that disappearance, the person called Kozuki had an accident and died. Kozuki had returned to the real world, but was unable to live on peacefully. There is a stinging sensation inside of me. The reason we came to Munson Aquarium was because of Himino's ghost story. Couldn't that have also been someone who returned from Munson Aquarium? The story's content was different, but the result was the same. The full moon and the red water could be considered the dramatization of an urban legend. Hmm. Uh, there's something that's bothering me. It's a ghost story I heard from Himino ghost story. Having caught the girl's attention, I tell her the story as we sit. I forgot some of the finer details and mix up the order, but I give her the same general story. You heard the story from that girl Himeno? You don't know any more details? That's all I heard. Himeno insisted it was a rumor, so she probably doesn't know any further details either. I see. By any chance, have you heard that story as well? Some time passes, but the girl still doesn't say anything else on the subject. The girl's expression seems a little different than it has up until now, but I cannot get a deeper read on it. Not allowing the signs to continue much longer, the girl speaks without looking at me. Thinking about it won't do any good. Well, I'm going. Wait, um... Didn't I tell you? I have no desire to run from Munt and Aquarium. The girl says this over her shoulder, putting her hand on the door to the staff room. According to the map, the side the girl exits from leads to the gate. The girl, having turned down my request for company, I can see that she's no longer going to stop to help me so I don't try to make her. And now I am alone, once again. This room has neither the sound of machines nor that of ventilation fans, so I can hear the beating of my timid little heart. I remember another room of the staff member wrote in the diary. A girl with long and winter clothes. The girl was referred to as a ghost. She wasn't in the story human or told. What it may have hinted was that, at was that Murray ha Muddy had already become a ghost, so the Muddy that had appeared before me was... One part of me agrees with that thinking, but another part of me rejects it. I am torn between the two and the inside of my eyes grow hot. There's no use in thinking about it. I have to move forward. If I falter, nothing will change, right? I am alone again, but it isn't as if I don't know anything. 
it isn't as if I can't do anything. So, I have to save Hienor, or I have to save money. Well, I mean, naturally, we'd save Himino, right? Because she's technically still alive. Money is technically... Well, I don't want to say she's dead, but she's been gone for five years, right? I have to save Himino. That's right. I will save Himino. I won't just say that she can probably be saved. Within this aquarium, I have to be determined. That girl had steeled herself because she had no doubts. She seemed strong. I'll move on. Saying this, I reached for the door of the staff room. That was definitely the first time we switched seats in 7th grade. Hey, it's Himenu. Wow, that is not the tits of a 7th grader, dude. Just saying. <laughs> okay, who will I sit next to? Uh, um, Nakabe-san, was it? It's Nakanobe. When I first entered junior high, I didn't really make an effort to talk to any of my classmates, so I had no friends. Even now, I have anxiety about talking to people I don't know, but it pales in comparison to the way I was a year before last. During free time, I would read books in the corner of the classroom. During lunch, I would slowly eat my lunch alone. That was how I was every day. I knew how to keep myself occupied. Ah, sorry. By the way, Nakanobe-san, do you have low blood pressure? No, not really. Hmm, well, I'm your neighbor now. Let's get to know each other. Himino was the last one in the row closest to the window, and I was next to her. Himino ended up with no one else to talk to, so all she did w so she did all she could to talk to me, or at least that's how I saw it. Ah, uh, Mayu, your lunch is ground steak with cheese inside. I just love it. Let me have a little. Ah, uh, my side dish. Okay, I'll give you the pork from my sakisoba bread, Mayu. No thanks. Jeez, quit being so picky, Mayu. Mayu? Yeah, Mayu. You're Mayumi-chan, right? So I thought I should call you Mayu. You remember my name? This exchange took place two days after our seats exchanged. I still had an open my heart to Himino. Undaunted by my curt ma manner, Himino would do things like reach for my box lunch. Up to that point, I had never told her my first name, but Himino called me Mayu. After that day, something changed. I would initiate conversation with Himino, and even after that semester and the next seat change, Himino would bring her lunch over and eat with me at my desk. Before I realized it, Himino and I become friends. The first time Himino and I ever argued was in the summer. Should we see a documentary or a horror movie? It was a trivial matter, but it was important to us. After that, Himino and I fought numerous times, but we made up just as many. Every time it rains, the ground hardens. Himeno. I muttered to myself. Even with today's argument, we made up. There was nothing else more important than Tamagawa Himeno, my one and only best friend. My best friend. Yes, that's right. No matter what, I will protect her. Yeah, you do that, girl. You fucking do that, girl. Friendship for the fucking win. Yeah. Mm, I'm being a bit aggressive right now because that's that's because the feels are trying to get to me and I'm trying to stay manly. Mm, it's not working. <laughs> God damn it! It's not working. All right, guys, I'll leave this episode right here. Well, we found out a few interesting things about the aquarium, but still, there is a lot of unanswered questions. Like, who exactly is that girl? Is she Mayu? Or is she not Mayu? Uh, no, not Mayu. Mari. 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 The names are fucking similar. Is she Mari? Or is she not Mari? Is she someone completely different? Who the fuck knows? Can we save him all? Who the fuck knows? Where are we going? Who the fuck knows? But, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoy. Subscribe for more anime banda. Keep watching anime. Ciao!